Welcome everyone to Guild Family Ministries. We're in our Book of John study and we're in John chapter 3. And this is a really special chapter. I know everyone has their favorite books of the Bible, mm -hmm. their favorite verses. But in John chapter 3, it really has probably one of the greatest expressions of God's love for people. Right. And that's what this whole study is about, because we're looking around at all the things going on out there in society. Right. And um, this is a really tough time for a lot of people. And I think one of the things that we need to do is to get back to love. And so um, we uh, wanted to study the book of John because he's the beloved, uh, the beloved apostle, but also because this particular chapter three really sets forth a, a great declaration of God's love for people. And so what have you got, Sharon? What's God saying to you, uh, you in, know, in John 3? You know, I think everyone knows John 3 because of John 3, 16, 16 right? right. Um, <laughs> and I've been wrestling with John chapter 3 all week, Wayne, because yeah. God keeps pointing me back to the whole point of John chapter 3, 16. For yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his son, so who believe it right. in him? Right. And I really felt like on this particular one, I want to throw the ball to you to explain what does that mean about who believed in you, you know, yeah. what, you know, should have everlasting life? Because I know that we're viewed um, by people of all faiths, right? Right. But to the Christians or to, yeah. you know, I'd love for you to share the whole plan of salvation. Before we do that, though, there was one scripture. Yeah. And I just chuckled, <laughs> which was the beginning when Nicodemus came to speak to Jesus. The Bible says in verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night right, <laughs> and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For yeah. no one can do these signs like you do unless God is with him. And I thought yeah. to myself, so if you know that he's came, he's, he came from God, why do you have to come by night? Yeah. <laughs> and I just feel like it's the same way with us mm -hmm. in the marketplace as Christians. Sure. There's, Jesus is somehow a stumbling block. You know, everyone's trying to deny him, hide from the fact that we know him. And this has been happening from the beginning of time. <laughs> yes. With his ministry, you know, we're yeah. always denying who he is. And so that struck me. But really, the bigger, the bigger theme for me is having you explain how do we get saved? How do we yeah. have an everlasting life? Sure. Well, you know, that's one of the first things you said about coming to him by night. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we have to understand as believers, right? Um, the ambassadors of Christ is that we're not really ever going to win a popularity contest. <laughs> And I think that's part of what's going wrong is we're yeah. trying to. We're trying very hard to make everyone, quote unquote, like us. Yeah. Um, but th that's not really the mission. Yeah. You know, Jesus himself, right, yes. was uh, spat upon, um, falsely accused and given a wicked, horrific death. Right. B based on what his beliefs are. So and he says over and again in there that his his followers would kind of expect the same treatment. Yeah. So I think one of the things we have to do is just it, Explain the best as we can to our friends and neighbors, family, to our loved ones, to anyone, the love of God. Yeah. And not try and to uh, sugarcoat it or to try to, to kind of win friends over by um, sneaking around it, mm -hmm. you know, coming at night or oh, not night. saying it or yep. all, all of the things that we do. So, you know, before, you yeah. know, it's easy for people to say God, but yes. not Jesus. Yes. You know, we can, we can pray in God's name. Yeah. But that Jesus name, boy, it's like a stumbling block, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he says that in the, yeah. in the scriptures that, you know, the name of Jesus is the, a name of power and it, yeah. is a, and it is a stumbling block. But look, I will say this much, right? Nicodemus came by night, but he came. Right? <laughs> he did come to Jesus, right? True. And he True. had a lot to lose because he, he was a Pharisee, right? True. Which he was uh, one of the leaders in the religious order that really opposed Jesus's mm -hmm. message, the, the new message that Jesus was, was, was bringing. And so for Nicodemus to come at all, I mean, we, we give him strength. And so that's, mm -hmm. we give him credit for that. Yes. And so I just want to say that to anyone out there who you may be intrigued by the message of Jesus. You may not be a Christian. You may believe in some other faith or believe nothing at all, mm -hmm. but you're intrigued by this message of love. And so my, my um, word to you would be welcome, you know, hmm. come by night, come by day. Um, you know, there was Just a popular call. song one time <laughs> said you can meet me by railway or trailway or whatever, whichever way you come, you know, Jesus loves you, you know, really just as you are. And so I know we've heard that, um, that verse in John chapter three and verse 16, for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. right? So that anyone who would believe in him would not perish, but would have 
everlasting life. And you may wonder what that means. Essentially, Jesus kind of ended his discourse with Nicodemus, the teacher, uh, right, of the Pharisees of that particular religious sect, to demonstrate to him um, what Jesus's mission was, which was to show the love of the Father. To mm -hmm. Essentially, we believe in Jesus as Jesus is the embodiment of God's love in the flesh. In John chapter 1, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So God came to us in, the, in, in flesh form as Jesus Christ that to give anyone who would believe in him the opportunity to have that relationship with God and to have everlasting life. I think what happens is we get kind of confused with a lot of terminologies that get thrown around. Like, for example, in John chapter 3, right? Um, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you have to be born again, mm -hmm. right? To, 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 mm -hmm. uh, to, to uh, enter the kingdom. Right. So, he didn't understand what yeah, that he, meant. he didn't understand what that meant at all. So, yeah. and, and a lot of times you may not understand that, right? You hear the term born again Christians, right? So what is this thing born again? What does that mean? Sometimes you hear people say, well, he's been converted. He was converted to the faith. Well, what does that really mean? Oh, he was saved. Oh, well, he saved from what? What, <laughs> what, is, what does saved mean? Oh, he, you know, he's got Jesus in his heart. What is that? You know, so it's like all these terminologies mm -hmm. that um, we throw around. But we can put the terminologies aside and we can, we can know that, look, God created mankind and God loves mankind. But mankind walked away from God. Right. Starting all the way back in the garden with the with, with the first man, Adam, Adam chose to go his own way. And so from that first man chose to go his own way. Every other man has followed in his footsteps. And 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 Jesus is is God in the flesh coming back to win man back to God. But before you can be won back to God, there's a couple of things that need to happen, which unfortunately gets kind of messed up in the jargon as well. There must be a thing called repentance. And repentance means that you have to turn away from what separates you from God, turn away from your sin, and turn back towards God. That's that's the, the, the simplest definition of it. It's like you're walking down the road in one direction, and then you make a complete 180-degree turn and come back in the other direction towards God. And so there's a there we can all say we love God but without repentance without us saying you know what I know I'm a sinner or I know I've fallen short of the grace of God I know I've made uh, mistakes I've you know I've lied cheated done things that um, that God would not approve of and you know what I want to repent of that I want to put that aside and turn around from that and walk directly back towards God until we can make that declaration then we won't have that relationship. But if we will repent and then um, ask uh, Jesus to, um, to come and live in our heart or to um, uh, forgive us of those sins, then we can have that relationship, the restoration of the relationship with the Father. And that's pretty much what Jesus was talking to Nicodemus about. That Nicodemus, you can know a lot of things as a teacher of the Pharisees, as a religious person even. You can know a lot of things. But I'm not really dealing so much with your head knowledge. I'm dealing with your heart. And until with your heart, you repent or you turn around, turn back from the direction you're going in and come towards me, yep. there could be no true relationship. So, Wayne, how does a person, you know, get saved? And, you know, can you break that down? I mean, I remember someone once saying, it's the ABC, right? <laughs> yeah. So, A, you accept that Jesus Christ, right, yep. is the Son of God, right? Yes. Is a, you know, is your Savior. You know, B, you believe it in your heart, right? Yeah. You know, you believe it in your heart. You yes. believe it internally. And C, you confess that I'm a sinner. You say it with your you mouth. You know, yeah. and you say it with your mouth. You know, hey, man, this is what I believe. You know, Christ, you know, died for me. And, you know, and, and upon that declaration, you know, the Bible says that we are saved. Yeah. And so, you know, it sounds kind of too simple to be true, but yeah. is it just as simple as that? Yeah, and, and you're right. I think that's, in all the years, right, um, of talking to people about faith or about salvation and all these things, I find that that's sometimes one of the stumbling blocks, yeah. right? Yeah. That it seems too simple. It's a, it's a, it's a gift. You know, I, most people feel they have to work for it. Like, first, let me go clean my act up, right? Mm -hmm. Let me stop smoking or let me, you know, stop uh, being, you know, having an anger problem or whatever the, the issue is. You know, people feel like they first got to clean themselves up and then come to God. 
and it because it sounds too generous right. but really what it is it's just a picture of the generosity of god that you can't buy salvation you can't earn it you can't be good enough for it you can't do anything all you have to do is as the, the gentleman shared with you to accept that jesus is the son of god he is who he said he was right yeah. believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth and if you do that then the bible says that that is a gift that's given to you um from from God and all you have to do is receive it yep. you know and 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 honestly you can't have that relationship with God until you receive it that's right it's almost like if I uh reached into my pocket right now right and I pulled out a hundred dollar bill and I and I gave it to Sharon as I'm often doing no oh, just yeah. kidding <laughs> <laughs> and um I'm trying to give it give the bill to her but she literally won't take it from me you see then it is a gift it is offered but you've got to receive it. That's right. Until Sharon takes a hundred dollar bill out of my hand, it's mine, right? It's not hers. And in John chapter one, it actually says that. It says, for as many as received him, to those he gave the right to be called the children of God. So you've got to receive him. And if you don't receive him, then you don't have the relationship. This is such an important point that if there's someone watching, you know, this video, at some point today or whatever day you're watching it um and you feel like you have a question you know uh, yeah. about receiving god i mean please feel free to inbox either of us yes. we'd love to walk you through that because i think it is so important that you realize that christ came and yes. died for you and died for me and um he's just waiting for you to accept that free gift of salvation and we'd like to walk you through that if you're you're up to it amen amen well, that was a good, robust discussion. Look, this is always a trouble with um, going through the Bible. <laughs> when you go through these <laughs> chapters, there is so much yeah. um, that ground that you could cover. But really, this was the message that uh, we felt that we really wanted to camp out on today. Because I think that's where the love starts, you know. Mm -hmm. If we can restore that love relationship between us and God, yeah. then it, His love is lit up inside our hearts. And then, you know, actually the greatest commandment, Jesus said, was to love the Father, right? To love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second one is like unto, then to love your neighbor yes. as yourself. So when we could connect up to that love of God, Sharon, yeah. then all of a sudden he begins speaking to our hearts and we could go out and, and love each other better, love our neighbors better, love, you know, the person who you may even disagree with better. That's right. Amen. The person was mowing the lawn across the street. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> I can't hear what I'm saying, but I love him. Yeah. All right. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Right. And so uh, we're going to just leave you with one question today. And, and the, the clear question is the question that Jesus kind of posed to Nicodemus. Are you born again? Yeah. What does that mean to you? And are you? And uh, just uh, drop us some comments, as Sharon says, or leave us your prayer request. We really appreciate all of you. Thank you for uh, joining us on this journey. And um, we'll see you in John chapter 4. Take care.